everyone. Thanks for watching Access Hockey MI. We are back and we're going to do something that we absolutely love to do today, <laughs> which is talk about hockey. And we're going to talk about Yana Timbergen, who is making a splash in Detroit and he probably won't be back to the Griffins, which is very sad as far as like, oh, we'd like to watch him play, but very happy because that's where we want him to be. <laughs> um, it's one of those, it's a weird, bittersweet kind of it thing is. for all Griffins fans. It is the nature happens. of what we do. Um, before we get going into it, though, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We really appreciate all the support that you give us. Um, it's just nice to be able to do this and to have people who actually want to watch us do mm -hmm. it and listen to us do it. So um, like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you check out our website for all sorts of things, www.accessshockeymi.com. And let's go. Woo! Jonathan Bergen. I almost called him Jonathan. Oh, man. I would have been a schmuck. <laughs> so he came to us last season in Grand Rapids, the 2021-22 season, as a rookie in the, NA the AHL, uh, I should say, his North American debut. Yeah. Prior to that, he was drafted in 2018, spent some time in Sweden. He broke and set new records um, in Grand Rapids. He got 64 points in 70 games. Uh, pretty darn good, I would say, yes. for your first go around <laughs> in North America. Yeah. Uh, pretty, pretty much no adjustment necessary. Mm -hmm. the, necessary. My goodness, I'm just <laughs> word salad. I'm sorry. Uh, he recently got pulled up to Detroit, and in 14 games, he's had nine points so far. And that's as of the recording. There will be plenty more games before we even put this up. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, he's making a huge impact as mm -hmm. such a young player, only in his second pro season, already doing so well in the NHL. Yeah, that is pretty impressive. I yeah, it is impressive, and it. Was it was really exciting to see him come over because we had heard a lot about him, of course, in Sweden after mm -hmm. he was drafted. Um, and he is someone who, he actually did play seven games this year, um, this season with Grand Rapids and has seven points. And a lot of injuries in Detroit opened up the doors, basically, for him to be able to make his debut. We didn't foresee him this soon into the season being called up to Grand, or to the Red Wings because mm -hmm. he can get a lot of play time in Grand Rapids because he is one of their, was one of their most trusted um players, basically. Mm -hmm. Someone who you could send him out on the ice, and clearly given his points and his production, he would get out there and he'd get the job done, which is something that the Griffins are now kind of missing in their offense. So he's a very offensive player. He's very fun to watch, um, and he's someone that we have been watching, and it's just been really exciting to see him <laughs> on so the excited. Red Wings. <laughs> it is exciting, and he is just making, like I said, making yeah. a splash, and we're excited to see it. Yeah, and like Janae said, without all these injuries... Um, I know at the beginning of the season, and we may have even mentioned it in a previous video, where it's like, oh, you know, he needs another full season, which in, in our minds at that point, yeah. But with this, with the floodgate of injuries that seems to, you know, plug us every year, yeah. he's swimming upstream and doing a great job at he it. Is. And taking advantage of that opportunity. Um, he's very skilled, very good with the puck. He's not showy. His moves just end up being showy naturally, and I don't yeah, think he's he just intends smooth. it. Yeah, he doesn't intend for it to be that way. Well, and something that I think is, is worth noting is he's such a comfortable smart hockey player mm -hmm. that from Sweden to North America and AHL there he didn't miss a beat mm -hmm. and now from the AHL to the NHL he didn't miss a beat either no. and that is something that is I think pretty rare to find I mean we had it with um Lucas Raymond he mm -hmm. went right to the NHL Moritz Sider had a year development in Grand Rapids before he went to the NHL but he also didn't miss a beat and I think that we've had some really good not luck we've had some really good um those guys drafting I right. mean those good scouts selections. yeah so it's Rachel had said it off camera. It's more than just drafting skill. You got to draft the character too. So these are actual. He's a he's just a smart, um, conscious hockey player mm -hmm. that's very good at doing his job. And someone like that, again, you can't teach that really. Mm -hmm. Like that is very to him. It seems very natural. And it's again, it's just fun right. to watch. You, yeah, you can teach the habits and everything. Yeah. But when it comes down to the grind and the work ethic, it's on you. Yeah. And. You know, this this is not even so much development, and we were talking off camera, which, again, this is just how we talk, except yeah. now there's a camera on. <laughs> it's true. But we were talking about how, you know, with the character and with that work ethic, it's not even so much development now. You know, he had his one-year internship, as it were, yeah. you know, with his just job. Just getting and, used to North yeah, America. Nice. and now he's been promoted. Good job. And yeah. it's we're not even having to really give him a set list of things to work on. There's always going to be things. Oh, yeah. He's always going to need to improve. Right now, he's kind of a third and fourth liner, I think, mo mostly fourth. Mm -hmm. But still doing an incredible job and there has been times he's the only one putting up numbers like just recently so well he yeah exactly and he's very smooth skating I mean there's nothing that I can say against his play style his right. play style is very natural and it's very effortless and that is something that's so um great to have in someone that has just been called up because right. I think he's already become a very trusted player on the team and that's just gonna his confidence is gonna keep growing with the team whose confidence is growing right now anyway mm -hmm. because they are doing much better than last year much better than the year before 
Um, and Rachel mentioned he's on usually the fourth line, but he's usually on a line with Joe Valeno, who was also a Griffin for a while. He's mm-hmm. had quite a trombone experience <laughs> yes. up and down and up and down with um, the Red Wings and the Griffins organization. But them working together, I think, is very, very good for both of them because sure. Valeno has improved since bergen has been called up, and they both have played with each other, and both their play styles work really well together. Mm-hmm. And it's resulted in a lot of good production. Right. And that just goes to show, too. And it puts an eye back on Valeno. It does. Who should have an eye on him because he's really good. We've always been (laughs) saying, Valeno, go back. Team (laughs) Valeno. But with that and with the injuries being out, a lot of these younger guys are getting more of an opportunity. And I think last season, a lot of people overlooked Valeno even when he was doing incredibly. But with Bergen being there, that familiarity, and he's even said it, too. Having him there, they know how each other plays. And, you know, that we don't really... I think they have similar ways of playing the game too as far yeah. as like Seeing, how they mentally right attack the game yeah. I think is very similar yeah and I think their dispositions are very similar too um yeah. they're they're there it's all business you're there to work and that's what they're you're doing. there to stay in Detroit right that is your mission is yeah. to stay in Detroit and exactly can and to stay there then Bergman's really you know even though he's kind of the the younger in the development process um he's really pushed Valeno and that just shows that he has the maturity and the character to push those around mm-hmm. him and improve the lines you're on. You want every line to produce. Yeah. And the fact that their line is producing so yeah. well since his arrival there, yeah. it just shows that he can be moved throughout the lines, work his way up, yeah. and the people around him are going to get better. And then conversely, get everyone else better at the same yeah. time. So it's just it's a really good move to see, and it's really exciting to see because he is a mature player for his age. Yeah. Um, well, and it's like you said. We don't see Bergeron much as a, like, we talk about development all the time. Mm-hmm. The guys that need, you know, time in the AHL, like Edvinson right now, Simon right. Edvinson, and like Albert Johansson, who are, who need time in the AHL to develop their, their skill and their ability. But as far as um, Bergeron goes, he has developed his skill and ability. He had that time that year, um, year plus in North America with the Griffins mm-hmm. to develop his play style, his playability, his confidence, um, all that stuff. Um, but now, I think with the Red Wings team now, so we'll transition into talking a little bit about their season, um, they're 13, 8, and 6 right now. And when we watch them, you can tell they play with a lot of confidence and a lot more fight in most games. Some game, I mean, there's some games that are still like, where did they go? <laughs> but I think they are overall more consistent than they were. And right. I think that with the players that they've gotten, like David Perron and like Sherratt, and you know their goalies behind them that they can now trust, I think that as a team... They're going to improve each other even more, and I think Bergen's going to be a part of that mm-hmm. to where where he maybe, when you get stagnant in one league and you move up, it's kind of like where you don't want to be stagnant. If they're going to be that way, you want them to go to the next level so right. they can just keep improving, right. and I think that's where Bergen and, you know, Valeno and Rasmussen and Roenick and all these guys that we've seen come through the Griffins, I think that's where right now them being Red Wings and having this new team and this new confidence is doing wonders for their playing. Yeah, it's doing wonders for the organization, too, because I think that puts... There's a little um, more spark, I think, this season. There's a lot more tenacity. There's something different. And we talked a lot last season about, you know, they just... The confidence wasn't there. The locker room was just tough. You know, they have loss after loss. It gets hard to take. And you know what? There are seasons like that. The Griffins are going through a season like that right now, which we'll talk about more in in next videos. But it's... I don't... It's it's a whole, you have to have that mm-hmm. mental maturity just to get out there and play right. and put your all in. And I think that Bergen does add that to the And team I think too. injecting the youth in there and yeah. these guys where we're not like previous seasons and a couple seasons ago where we're passing over elite talent and you have to get them at their prime, put them in that position so they can best succeed. Yeah. And we did miss a couple good prospects by not doing that. And I yeah. think right now the way that things are going, Yeah, and it, it looks like it's more of yeah, that style. maybe by accident, like yeah. with interviews or with injuries, but, yeah. you know, still a very good thing um, that Bergen can, you know, step into, and yeah. I think he's just happy to do his part, um, and he very much is. So we wish he could come back, but we don't want him to at the <laughs> We same wish time. he could be in two places at once. That would be amazing. <laughs> haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> yeah, that's too bad. But yeah. um, that's basically our gush fest about Yay. Bergen, um, considering we've watched him develop in Grand Rapids and Whenever he's on the ice, that's all we're watching because <laughs> we get really attached to these guys that come through Grand Rapids because you feel like you grow with yeah. them almost. I mean, we're just we're fans, we're reporters, we're yeah. photographers, but at the same time, it's um, you spend seasons looking at what yes. happens in the locker room and you feel that. Yeah, you, you do feel a lot of it. Um, and we might take it 
seriously, but it's very personal. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's basically our take right now on Bergen. We hope that he can continue um, his his production and his growth in the NHL. Yeah. Um, we hope that he stays there because that's what you want. Even the coaching staff at Grand Rapids, they talk about how like you want you don't want you them don't to want come them, back. you don't want to see him again. You <laughs> want them to stay there because that's what they're there for. We'll and that's hold what down things in GR. Don't worry. Yeah, we'll figure we it out. This. Um, but let us know in the comments if you've noticed, noticed Bergen on the ice and what you think about him. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about the line with him and Valeno? Um, and let us know in the comments what you thought about the Red Wings season so far, if you noticed a change from last season and the year before. Um, and thanks again for watching. We really we appreciate you guys. Yeah, we really appreciate <laughs> you giving us the time off. Yep. <laughs> and we will see you guys next time. Bye.